In this video, we're going to talk about how to set yourself up to create a great pre-recorded presentation using tools and equipment you have at home. Some of the principles in this video can also be applied to live presentations. If you haven't already watched the video about designing slides for presentations, you can find a link in the description below this video. Let's get started! Before we get into the aesthetic and technical, let's talk a little about some conceptual considerations for how a pre-recorded presentation is different than a live presentation. First, you don't have an audience to give you feedback. If you've ever taken a speech class, you may know that an audience gives you nonverbal feedback about how you're doing while you're talking, such as nodding, not paying attention, or looking a little confused. When you don't have that, it's easy to create a presentation that is entirely confusing to the viewer or really boring without knowing it. That's why we recommend practicing beforehand with an audience. Ask a friend or colleague, even if it's over Zoom or WebEx, to listen and give you feedback about what's good and what needs to be fixed. Not only does practicing help with content and clarity, it also gets you prepared to record. Second, a pre-recorded presentation is not live. So if you mess up, you get to try again. You'll probably have to do multiple takes and that's okay. I make lots of recordings and even I have to record at least three times for each section I'm recording, sometimes more if I'm having a hard time with the section. Plan plenty of recording time so you don't feel rushed to turn in your recording. Also, you'll probably want to record in smaller chunks if you can. Make sure that's okay with your instructor. Recording in smaller chunks makes it easier because if you make mistakes, you don't lose a ton of time fixing them. I usually record a few paragraphs at a time usually chunks that are no more than three minutes long. Finally, while you're probably somewhat used to live presentations, if you've never done a recording before, it can be hard to sound normal. You don't want to sound monotone when you present. You also don't want to sound like you're a cartoon. Use your normal speaking voice. Speak loudly and clearly and be sure to enunciate your words. Create a script if you can, but still be prepared to talk off the cuff you don't want to sound like you're just reading. The more you practice, the easier it will be to sound normal. If you're not sure whether you sound normal, record a little bit and play it back. You're probably still going to sound a little different to yourself, but you can always ask a friend to listen too. Here are some other helpful tips for preparing to record. One, go slow. It can be easy to talk too fast when no one is listening. You'll sound like a cartoon if you talk too fast and no one will be able to get what you're saying. See? Two, breathe. It can also be easy to forget to breathe. Be sure to take normal breaths when you're recording. Plan out breaths if you need to. Additionally, before you start recording, take a few deep breaths to settle yourself before you begin. Three, drink water between takes. Being hydrated helps your voice stay normal and not get fatigued or scratchy. Four, Either stand the whole time or sit in a comfortable chair when recording. You don't want to be readjusting position because you're uncomfortable. If you can avoid it, don't sit in a chair that rotates or rocks. Moving chairs tend to make lots of noise. Five, if you keep tripping over a word or phrase when recording, rewrite it. Unintentional tongue twisters happen all the time. Don't waste time trying to say it correctly. Just rewrite it so it's easier to say. If you want some feedback on your presentation or need someone to practice with, don't forget that Design Lab is here to help. Feel free to make an appointment with one of our Design Lab consultants to get one-on-one -on -one feedback. Now let's go into some of the aesthetics and technical considerations for recording. I'm going to talk about audio first. That way those who won't be recording any video can stop when we get to the video part. When you're recording audio, here are a few aesthetics to consider. First. Wherever you choose to record, make sure the location is quiet. It can be hard sometimes with loud neighbors or roommates, pets, etc., but do your best to avoid noise interference where you can. It is often best to record when you are the only one in a room. Also, stay away from refrigerators, dishwashers, washer dryers, fans, and AC or heat vents, which can create a humming in the background. And if you're recording near a window, make sure it's not near a busy street. Additionally, avoid wearing loud clothing or jewelry that can give noise interference. Second, smaller rooms give you better sound. 
large rooms, or even rooms with hard floors and bare walls can give your voice an echoey sound. These acoustics may be great for singing, but not for giving a presentation. Third, turn off all notification devices. Cell phones, tablets, smartwatches, computers, Alexa, Google Home, etc. You don't want the sound of an incoming email or message to be caught on the recording. Now you may be wondering what equipment should I be using to record? Most of you don't have a ton of fancy equipment to record your presentation and you don't need to go out and buy it. Instead, we recommend using either your phone or tablet or your computer with an external microphone. You can use your phone or tablet for both audio and video, but we'll get to the video part later. If you're using your phone or tablet for audio only, you can use the built-in note-taking app on the phone or download a free recording program from an app store. Then you can put the audio directly into your PowerPoint or Keynote. If using your phone or tablet's microphone input, it is best to keep your input about four inches to a foot away from your mouth. Too close and you'll get distortion and popping from your breath. Too far and you'll sound too quiet. Find the best distance by doing a couple of short test recordings to get the best sound. You can also use a set of headphones with a built-in microphone, like most wired earbuds nowadays. If using an external microphone, just make sure the position is still four inches to a foot away from your mouth and that if the microphone hangs down, that it's not rubbing against clothing or jewelry. If you're using your computer to record, we also recommend connecting an external microphone and not using the built-in microphone. Most computers have a built-in microphone that can be used in a pinch, but it has pretty poor placement on the computer and the audio quality is not the best. When using your computer to record audio only, you can record directly into PowerPoint or Keynote, or you can use QuickTime on Apple computers or for Windows computers, you can either install the Voice Recorder app or use the Video Recorder program. Unfortunately, Google Slides does not have a recording option at this time. Also, if you don't have the equipment or are worried about audio quality, there are some external microphones and audio recorders available for checkout from College Library. Be sure to check their website for the most up-to-date hours and information about their equipment checkout policies. That's it for audio. Again, Design Lab is here to help you figure out how to get the best audio you can. Feel free to start a chat with us or make an appointment. Now let's talk about pre-recorded presentations with video. If you want to or are required to record yourself and your screen, there are multiple ways you can do it. Unfortunately, there are no built-in options that allow for both screen capture and video recording on either Mac or Windows machines. Probably the easiest option is that you could record yourself using a program like Zoom or WebEx, both of which are free to UW-Madison students, faculty, and staff. You would share your screen and also have your video running. While there are no built-in editing tools within Zoom or WebEx, you could just record the entire session, get everything recorded, and easily take the video export and edit it using a free video editor, such as iMovie or DaVinci Resolve. You could also record just yourself using a phone or tablet camera QuickTime on Apple computers, or the video recorder program on Windows computers. Then, using iMovie or DaVinci Resolve, add the video over your slides. You could also record video for each slide separately and add the video directly into the PowerPoint or Keynote in the corner of each slide. Another option is to download a free screen recording program such as Screencast-O-Matic or Screencastify. Screencast-O-Matic is one of the best options for free presentation recording. However, it only allows for up to 15 minutes of content, minimal editing, and has a watermark on the exported video. Screencastify is another option. However, it only allows for five minutes of recording, but it does have better editing tools and recording options. Both of these could work depending on your assignment and your needs. There are also plenty of programs out there for doing screen recording with simultaneous video that costs money, and some offer free trials, such as Camtasia. We try to avoid recommending programs where you have to pay. If you're a UW-Madison student, you might consider the free trial of Camtasia for this assignment if you won't need it again. If you're a UW-Madison instructor, you may actually have free access to Camtasia already. Check the UW-Madison campus software library. Now let's talk about how to make your video look good. First, framing. Your camera should be as close to eye level as possible. Use props, a stand, or a tripod to get your camera at the right level. If you're using your phone or tablet, don't hold it. 
prop it, or use a tripod. You also don't want the camera to be too far away so we can see your whole body, or too close to you so we can only see your head. Shooting from the waist up is good, but you can have the camera even a little closer to you if you do not intend to use your hands much. Also, you want to have an appropriate amount of headroom. You don't want the top of your head cut off or have too much space above your head. It is best if your eyes are at about one third of the way from the top of the frame, as the lines on the image show. When you're recording with a phone or tablet, don't use digital zoom. Move the phone or tablet closer rather than mess with any zooming functions. Second, choose a good location. You want to eliminate the number of distractions around you so your audience will focus on you. That means you'll want to record in a place with minimal items in the background. Recording in front of a blank wall is better than recording in front of a bookshelf packed with books and knickknacks. If you're recording using Zoom or WebEx, we don't recommend using a virtual background. Third, find good lighting. You want to use natural light rather than fluorescent or incandescent lights when possible. This means recording during daylight near a window. You will always want the window in front of you, never behind you. And it is best if the window is not to one side of you, which can create shadows on the opposite side of the face. Instead, you want the light balanced to give minimal shadows. If you must record after the sun has gone down, be sure to use lamps at eye level or lower in conjunction with overhead lighting to avoid too many shadows on your chin. On the opposite side of things, too much light is also not good. Your face should look natural, not like it's glowing. If the light is too bright, turn it off or try a different location. Finally, what to wear. Dress professionally, similar to the way you would for an in-person presentation. Make sure that whatever outfit you wear doesn't blend in with the background. If you have a pale white wall as your background, you may want to wear a darker color. Also, you will want to avoid complex patterns or overly bright colors, which can be distracting and difficult for the camera to pick up. If you wear glasses, be aware of glare on the lenses when recording. If you can wear contacts or go without your glasses, that might be best. If you're like me and have blue light reduction film on your glasses, it will likely reflect your computer screen if you are recording using a webcam. As we come to the end, let me just remind you that you will probably not get the setup perfect the first time. You'll want to do a few test recordings to check for framing, lighting, and audio quality. Then make adjustments where necessary until you find the best setup for your recording. We hope these tips will help you make a well-polished presentation. Don't forget, Design Lab is here to help you with your project. Due to the pandemic, we have suspended all in-person appointments, but we are still offering appointments via video calls. You can make an appointment from the Design Lab website by clicking the pink Make an Appointment button. You can also start a chat with us using our new chat service, which is open anytime Design Lab is open. From anywhere on the Design Lab website, click Chat with Design Lab in the main menu. We look forward to working with you.